Okay, so we might have to change the um the unknown speed running time timing into real time instead of using the in-game timer because um I realize that it's kind of stupid and broken and it can be really stupid yeah. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, so the timer is set at 9.4, and when this is 9.9, .9, the next thing should be 10.0. But the next thing is 9.0, not 10.0. And then it's 10.0, and yet, and that's really dumb, and it works here to 9.9 .9 to 9.0. I mean 10.9, 10.0 to 11.0. And let's go not that far, but right here. 24, 25. So it works with or when the timer has two numbers on the second part. So 5.25.9. 25.0. So the main problem is, let's see if anything like that happened here. Okay, so I, w I could have gotten a 37.0. Actually, what was my time? Let me check. No, not paint up net, god damn it. 38.2, I got that. But I could have gotten a 37 if I entered the last place when the timer went from now it's 37.9 to 37.0. But you have to get up here for it to stop timing. So because of that, um, I got a 38.2. I could have gotten a 7.0 if I just was a tiny bit faster. I mean, two, four or five frames faster. That would have meant I would have gotten a 37 instead of a 38, and that makes no sense. So yeah, that can heavily change what the timing or um, what the time is when ending a run. Which that makes no sense. 37.9, 37.0, 38. Yeah, so we have to start using real time, aka a live split for example. Close the dumb. Uh, I'll paint that, we don't need it. Live split, we need to start using this. Uh, but when to start the time, I think the best way to do that is just first input. Yes, I um, do program splits. Um, but the way e to do that easily it will be to like by splitting the space X or something that's easy to press. So you can hit right and the split button instantly at the same time and timing will end when you see the last room this room at the frame it shows up okay here it will have ended here on this frame okay Okay, um, here's a way we can easily retime the unknown runs. Um, here we have most, well actually all of the unknown runs that are on YouTube and some other runs on my site. And the way, why not put fingers maybe here. I don't know. But the way we can retime them easily 
is to either get a Twitch, a YouTube extension or, or a Chrome extension. I don't remember what's the name of it, but you can frame, like, frame count with that. But if you don't feel like doing that, we can use Slashy. I'll put a link in the description for this program. So, you just want to open that. And you get this. Now let's go to the video. And we need a couple of information here. So we need the video FPS. And you can get that by stats for nerves. And it's that's the resolution. And then it's the frames. So mine is 30. Uh, mo leave modifier empty. Then start the start frame. Here you use your um, dot and comma of uh, to move around frame by frame YouTube that's been there then find the start of your run so we can get the first frame um, I went too far away I close that It's three frames after you see the one. Okay, now let's go do more. One, two. Because, actually no, I'm stupid. It's zero, and this is the frame we start when it's zero. And you know it's the right frame because the next frame is 0 0.1. So here you click right click and copy debug info and paste it in the start frame and then do the same for end frame so find the ending of your run and now we use the first frame we see this place or should we use when this appears maybe we should do that it didn't, well I don't know yet but let's say if it ended one when we see the frame, we will do this, go to debug info, place it there, and that's the final time. Uh, but if we end up using when the block appears here, then just to copy that and paste it, and it's, that. it's only 200 milliseconds difference, so it doesn't really matter at all. So yeah, cool.